I'm learning history in Cleveland, Tennessee. Oh, Coe Society, Five Points Museum. Hey guys, and welcome back to The Curious Curators. I'm Hope. And I'm Lindsay. And today we have a holiday-themed episode for you. Yeah, and probably not what you're expecting. Yes, we are not just going to talk to you about Thanksgiving, which is Thursday, but we are going to talk to you about what I would call a very American tradition. A very weird tradition, according to me and what, 53% of your Instagram followers? Yes. <laughs> yes, actually, it's like 53, 63% of the museum's followers. Oh, the museum's followers. And like mine was 50-50. But we are going to talk to you about the pardoning of the Thanksgiving turkey. Wow, that's something I never thought I would say out loud. I just, when I was trying to explain it in a way that somebody who had never heard of it had to understand it like a non-American, I never realized how weird it sounded until I was trying to explain it. I know, like when we were talking about it, I was like, what? It sounds more and more ridiculous the more that you try to explain it, I yeah. feel like. Because if you're just like, oh yeah, we pardon a turkey at Thanksgiving, cool. But you're like, but no, like, the president actually pardons this one turkey on like live television. And yeah. It just gets, I think it just gets more and more ridiculous as it goes, which that makes it very American, I think. Like just like the weirdness makes it kind of like very That's American. That's true. That's true. Um, this, so if you don't know about this, um, the week of Thanksgiving, the president of the United States of America pardons a turkey and that turkey and its runner-up turkey. Yes, it, the alternate. Yeah. Just like Miss America, the alternate The turkey. vice turkey, if you will. <laughs> um, they are both spared, and they're not killed to be someone's meal at Thanksgiving. Yes. At Thanksgiving, turkey is the traditional main dish. Yes. And this turkey, and, and these two turkeys, I guess, get to continue to live out their gobbletastic lives. Ooh, something else I never thought I would say. Um, but yeah, it's it's a thing and it's televised and it's on whitehouse.gov slash yes. gobble if you're <laughs> if you're curious. To and look and that people up. get to vote for which turkey gets pardoned. Yeah and based on their turkey profiles. Yeah, they have little like bios that um, say things like Favorite sport, NASCAR. <laughs> or college basketball. Yeah, and that's last year's turkeys, right? Bread and butter. Um, no, I think this year is bread and butter. Last year's it? was peas and carrots. Yes. They're usually given food-centric names, too. Yeah. Mac and cheese, biscuits and gravy. I believe these ones come from a farm in North Carolina, so I'm guessing the college basketball turkey is a Tar Heels fan. Mm. Um, so I'm extremely disappointed that he was not the one who got cho chosen to be pardoned. Well, he'll still get to live. And who knows, he might be pardoned because... Well, he has to go to Virginia Tech now, so... Yeah, that's true. But, like, they're, so they're both pardoned. But, like, the thing is, these turkeys are put up in a hotel. I wrote down the name of the hotel somewhere. Um, oh, yeah, it's the Will Willard Intercontinental Washington Hotel, located at 1401 Pennsylvania Avenue. This luxurious... Really close to the White House. Two blocks. And this luxurious hotel is 4.6 stars and goes for about $300 a night. So turkeys get to stay in a better hotel than I've ever stayed in. Same. And it look, it's a beautiful hotel. If you look it up, it's like one of those old um, stone facade. Oh. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, the turkeys um, live it up a lot better than I do. Yeah, if you looked on the White House website, at least today, they have pictures of bread and butter hanging out in the hotel room. I'm actually so jealous of these two turkeys. So, <laughs> And they also take a private train to D.C. Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, how they did it this year, like with covid and right like i'm not sure but usually they take a private train to dc to stay the night at this hotel and then the next morning they get up and go to the turkey pardoning ceremony and wow well, these turkeys live a much better life than i do yeah fair. um so i mean we could get into the history of it uh in just a minute but kind of talking about the current turkey situation is there is a presidential flock 
of 50 to 60 turkeys. Yeah. And they eventually narrow it down based on how interactive they are with their handlers and how good they look to about 15 to 20. And then they select two out of those 15 to 20 presidential flock. And this presidential flock is like acclimated to sounds of crowds and flashing lights and being on that stand and staying still like they're trained. That's, for this is, one moment. It's so interesting. So these turkeys actually grow up on a turkey farm. Yeah. And I didn't even, I guess, like, I should have thought this through. I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know that people had a turkey farm. Oh. I mean, I guess, like, I should have clearly have, like, chicken farmers and, like, pig farmers. But just, like... Well, this is your Davy Crockett moment. Like, I didn't know Davy Crockett <laughs> was real. <laughs> But when and it, you didn't know turkey farms were a thing. I like that's never something I considered. I'm not. I'm going to be honest with you here. I'm not really a turkey eater. Um, maybe well, ground turkey. I know you're a vegetarian, yeah. but like um, turkey is my least favorite thing about Thanksgiving or anything like that. I don't. Yeah, like, we have like a a vegetarian roast. <laughs> I'm the sides. I just want the sides. Oh yeah, yeah. Even even way back when. Um, you know, 10 plus years ago when I ate meat, I we ate, we were a ham family. We got ham. Yeah, we do ham a lot. We do but a ham and a turkey. Nobody really likes turkey in my family that much anyway, so we did ham, and the sides were always the best. The bread and butter, yeah. the peas and carrots, the mac and cheese. The dressing. My mom makes a cornbread dressing. Oh, I could, I could literally eat that every day of my life. Like, no lie. But Mashed potatoes. Mm, gravy. I put gravy on everything on a plate. Like, I'm looking forward to, like, being home. I don't really look forward to the Thanksgiving dinner, but I will have leftover dressing for, like, a week, and I'm here for that. But I guess we could give them a little something and talk about the history of this. Um, it's not as old as Thanksgiving as a holiday. Not really. Yeah. Um, what, Thanksgiving was made a holiday by Abraham Lincoln in 1863? I think. Okay. I think. Um, I could be wrong, but I think it's 1863. So Thanksgiving is a relatively new American holiday. In the scheme of things. I mean... I mean, America's relatively new. I was about to say, America's <laughs> not very old. So um, I think we're saying they celebrated the first Thanksgiving in like 1621, which is the year after the pilgrims would have okay. landed. Um, so 250-ish years later, Thanksgiving became a holiday. Okay. Um, but I know you have <laughs> the first thing on yours is Abraham Lincoln. So do you want to start yeah, with Yeah. So Abraham Lincoln is apparently the inspiration for the turkey pardoning. So um, a live turkey was brought home for Christmas dinner. Um, but Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln's son, Tad, um, so na nicknamed because that he was not a Thaddeus or a Theodore, which is usually a Tad. Right. Um, he was actually nicknamed that because... When he was born, he had a big old head, and he was wiggly like a tadpole. <laughs> so they called him Tad. Poor guy. Um, but he actually interceded on behalf of the turkey. He was a collector of animals. Okay. And Jack became one of his animals that he kept, Jack the turkey. I like that. So I was kind of looking through it to see, like, mo more modern, I guess. So, like, we can go ahead and make it known that the official turkey pardoning Started in like 1989. Yes, <laughs> yeah, there George was H.W. Bush. Yes, I was just going through the history that kind yeah. of led up to it. Well, I was just gonna say, like, I said that to like go backwards in time. Okay. So basically, apparently, it was a thing for the National Turkey Federation, not to be confused with the National Wild Turkey Federation, um, and like the United States Poultry and Egg like the national mm -hmm. board would present the president with the turkey from like the 1940s mm -hmm. um and sometimes the president would spare them and i guess sometimes they would eat them yeah but um in 1963 so this would be three days before his assassination jfk pardoned a turkey um but he didn't say like Pardon. Yeah, he it said, wasn't an official. Yeah, he was like, let's keep this pardon. one going or something. Um, and there's a picture of this turkey on the JFK Library website, and to me, it looked absolutely terrifying. But <laughs> its little beak is open, and, but you know, 
It's fine. Um, so he kind of did that. And it was like spontaneous, I guess. But everyone kept getting turkeys after JFK like it wasn't a thing. So Nixon would occasionally spare a turkey. And Jimmy Carter was like, I don't want anything to do with this. And he didn't even want the turkey. But his wife started having them sent to petting zoos, which is very nice. Yeah, uh, Patricia Nixon, uh, she would accept the turkeys on his behalf. And I know the one that was in 1973 got sent to a children's farm. I think that, like, okay, think about the petting zoos that you've been to, or even the one that we had here. I've never seen a turkey at a petting zoo. No. And these are, like, the white turkeys. I'm, like, the white, I'm, like, not even wearing white. Uh, These are the white turkeys, not... So, like, if you go hunting for a turkey, right. you get a dark brown turkey with, like, a red waddle, is that what they're yeah. called? And, like, iridescent kind of tail feathers. Mm-hmm. My dad clearly used to turkey hunt. Um, but these are not those. These are white turkeys with red heads. Yeah. I think the other turkeys look much more, like, not the stuff of nightmares. But that's just me personally. Um Anyway, Ronald Reagan um, ended up pardoning a turkey called Charlie. In um, and it, this was actually a PR move mm-hmm. on Reagan's part, which I think is kind of interesting. This is the time of the Iran Contra affair, and reporters were asking him if he was going to pardon Oliver North, and like kind of to deflect, he was like, "I'm going to pardon Charlie the turkey." Yeah. So, I mean, that at least got something started. And then George H.W. Bush started pardoning them in 1989. And we've never stopped. (laughs) Yeah, now it's an annual thing. Um, But, I mean, it's not... Those weren't the only times that turkeys have kind of gotten that presidential pardon. Um, The turkey presentation started around... 1947 was the presentation, but before that, even before that, um, the turkeys were turkeys were presented to the president since the 1870s as a sort of good cheer type of thing. Yeah, like um, a nice thing to like. We brought you dinner. Like it's like a nice thing yeah. to do. Yeah, and from like the 1870s to the 1910s, the same people did it uh, until they, I believe, their uh, leader or owner or what president died and after that it was kind of a free-for-all like a mm. like a girl scout troop sent uh calvin coolidge a turkey um and uh harry s truman is actually frequently cited as the beginner of the turkey pardoning oh yeah i was reading about that even and... though he was definitely not he was the start of the turkey presentation oh, okay yeah because the the Truman National Library. A lot of presidents have a national library. Yes. Um, and the Truman National Library is like, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but the what happened was apparently his government was encouraging poultryless Thursdays. So and, like meatless Mondays, but... Yes, and that got the National Turkey Foundation and that poultry and egg national board heated because that year... Thanksgiving always falls on a Thursday. Christmas yeah. fell on a Thursday. And New Year's Day fell on a Thursday. Right. So they were heated about that. And they sent him live chickens and a turkey. Um, and it was called Hens for Harry <laughs> in protest of this poultry list Thursdays. You know, that's like, it's so strange just like how someone is like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to start sending him turkeys. Yeah. Because then what's he going to... Then he's stuck with them and he has to eat them. Yeah. Like, if you sent me 50 turkeys, I would have my own personal turkey farm with 50 turkeys. Like, Same. It's like you always think of... um, That makes me think of, like, movie scenes. um, Like, if it's, like, during war time or something. And there's, like, the one chicken or something that someone's trying to catch. I know it's definitely a scene on... Um, gone with the wind they're trying to catch this one chicken and it's like evading everyone and then the scene cuts and it's a roasted chicken on the table um but it's like a very small chicken because like yeah times were tough in like 1863 um but it reminds me of that like almost like you don't have a choice you're gonna eat this i wonder did he did he give up 
like poultry list Thursday that I year? I think he did. Um, I, I'm pretty sure that they had turkey presentations, but they, they the turkeys were not pardoned. Only on these occasions that we've sort of talked about were they actually sent to live somewhere else or okay. pardoned. Well, so I was kind of curious. I was like thinking about it and I was like, why do we eat turkey? Okay. Like for holidays. Wow, you went deep. Um, so I was like, why do people even eat turkey? Well, so turkeys are like native to North America. Right. So it was easy. It could have been our national bird. Do we have enough? Oh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Oh, today. So it very well could have been our national bird. It was it was up for it was it was up for the title. It also inspires terror in me, so like we could go right there. There you that. go. But um apparently Like this like this podcast if turkeys inspire terror in you. <laughs> yeah. If you're like me, go ahead and let us know. I actually this just as a side note, but we both read Red Fight and Royal Blue. Yes. Um, and he had the turkeys in his in bedroom his room. and he was like, no, they're scary. And I'm like, yes, they are. They're horrible. Anyway, um, apparently pilgrims or, I mean, are they still called pilgrims after they've already landed here? I have no idea. The pilgrims then um, did hunt turkey in the fall of 1621. Um, which isn't much of a surprise as turkey are quite plentiful in the right. wild. So even if it wasn't a familiar bird, like, yeah, they would have hunted turkeys. But there's no actual record that turkey was eaten at the first Thanksgiving because there's not really an actual record of the first Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> but basically, when immigrants started coming over in the early 19th century, like, turkey and dressing were like taught to them as american things oh, okay. so then it's so that was like a way to americanize them eat turkey and dressing and then it just became more and more popular as large you know groups of immigrants were coming over and it was like plentiful everywhere so people just started making it when i imagine turkey was pretty familiar to them i mean it's like chicken yeah it, i think turkey tastes a bit different oh it does but but, but yeah it's similar to chicken um and when you when you would see it for the first time, it's still recognizable as hmm, that probably tastes like chicken. Well, honestly, it looks like just a big chicken. Yeah, like a raw turkey just looks like. So a if you never if you've come to America and you've never seen it before, and all of a sudden you see this big flightless bird out there, you're like, oh, fancy chicken. Yeah, and if you got it from the store, like it just looks like chicken. Yeah, and like we have to consider that most places. Do have chicken, so it's not like yeah, it's not like anybody was real surprised. It's not extra foreign, but yeah, it's and these are not um, these are called broad-breasted white turkeys. Um, yeah, and they don't live long. No, okay. So I thought when I was reading about all these pardoned turkeys, I was like, they don't like why pardon them? They don't because they only have a lifespan of like two years. Yes, and yeah. they're already. Like, by the time, like, a turkey, like, reaches maturity, it's already, like, 18 months old. So it's more than halfway done with its life, which is so depressing. Yeah, so a lot of these turkeys that get pardoned don't really last a year after pardoning. No. Um, just because they're not, they're bred to grow fast and grow big. Yeah, they have, and it's, they get obese, they have yeah. heart disease. A lot of turkeys die of heat stroke. Probably because they're so big. Yeah, and... Their feathers are very, very dense. Yeah, so they're sent to these farms. Um, they've been sent places like Disneyland, Mount Vernon, something called Frying Pan Park. Now That's they're sent to Gobbler's name. Rest at Virginia Tech. Yeah, where they just um, get to live out there. Yeah, they just life. hang out. Um, but they they really don't live for very long. Peas and carrots are still kicking, though. They're yeah. the ones who were pardoned last year. That's, so, see, that's good. They're but that's so actually pretty that's pretty yeah, uh, long long for them yeah it's been a year and they're still around and kicking i read somewhere and i couldn't find it again i read it when we were originally discussing this idea because you were sitting with me when i read it some like one group of the turkeys were the grand marshals of the macy's thanksgiving day parade um so that they were like the big draw at that parade you know they and I think that's so interesting. Well, and they have a turkey alternate in case in case the main turkey who gets voted in 
cannot perform their duties, which kind of just means they died. Yeah, that happened really recently, like in the last five-ish years or so. Like they had to go with the alternate turkey. turkey. So like Americans, um, well, I guess it doesn't even have to just be Americans, right? I guess anyone that can get on the internet and go to whitehouse.gov can vote on which this turkey, turkey is the presented turkey. Yeah, it's like oh, it's like a 24-hour open thing and you can vote. Well, when I first heard of the turkey and the alternate, I was like, so we get to choose which turkey lives and dies like Caesar. We've got our thumb out and deciding which one is uh, the one that's going to die. But no, they both go to retirement. They just have an alternate in case. Yeah. I just do cannot get over the fact that like people vote. <laughs> on this i think they vote on their names too yeah they the school they the white house staff picks a list in school children from their home state the turkeys okay. the turkeys home state okay so north carolina so this so, year it was north carolina yeah and i guess if the president of the Ner- national turkey federation is not from north carolina next year like someone else will get to vote okay so, so they voted on bread and butter yeah so it's so like this year And apparently it's still moving forward this year. Yeah, I saw that they announced, um, they did announce a couple days ago that um, they would pardon a turkey this year. So one of our turkey comrades will be going to be presented and go to Gobbler's Rest. But if if you want to know any any little fun facts before we sign off today, uh, bread and butter, apparently butter is the winner, but... Apparently they like soft rock, and this is what their handler says. They like soft rock, and he knows that because they gobble back when they hear that kind of music. I saw that like um, it lists their favorite music, their favorite snacks. Which was wrong, because their handler says they like soft rock, but butter liked bagpipes and bread liked bluegrass. Well, I did see, I hope that you looked at their life goals. Because bread's life goal oh, yes. is mastering aerial yoga, and butter's is getting his personal best in the turkey trot. I was so grateful that they gave them bios because I think that's the best part. But yeah, it's, I mean, interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, so you can go and look up the turkey bios as well and learn more about these turkeys' life goals. I feel like the White House should be sponsoring me with how many times I've plugged whitehouse.gov today. Slash gobble, and that's <laughs> the page. Slash gobble. <laughs> if you want to sponsor us. <laughs> four t- we're four times in counting, so. Um, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm shameless. Sponsored by the White House turkey presentation. <laughs> exactly. Also, I will go to the White House turkey presentation and run in fear from the turkey. I was about to say, and you don't want to be there. Like, I'll just run and let it chase me or something. I think that would be that's true. a great, like, ending to the newscast. Just, like, me running in terror. And If I we ever have to run. sign off of this podcast completely, like, final episode... The very last image will be of you running from a turkey. I mean, that's all I have about the turkeys yep, that's today. that's what I got. Um, we will be back next week. We are going to throw in some of our oldies but goodies that we used to do. So get ready for yeah. some historically inaccurate movies and some Wild West outlaws. Yes. One of my historical boyfriends gets his own TV or gets his own podcast episode. So there we go. You'll have to find out who that is next week. But, yeah, that's all I have today about pardoning the turkeys. Um, Bless bread and butter who are living their best turkey lives. In, in the Willard Hotel right now. Yeah, really nice hotel that that I desperately want to – I'm going to go ask to stay in the turkey room. Goals. All right. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. See you next week.